Hello, my name is Wang Chen from the University of Hong Kong. Today, I'm going to talk about Plover, an efficient fault tolerance system for improving the reliability of virtual machines. This is a joint work with my colleagues, Xu Shenchen, Wei Weijia, Bo Xuanli, Hao Ranqiu, Shi Xiongzhao, and our advisor, He Mingcui. By simplifying resource management and allowing multiple services to be consolidated on a single physical machine, Server virtualization techniques become popular, and more and more important services are being deployed in virtual machines. On the other hand, virtual machine fault tolerance becomes a, becomes a serious problem, as the failure of a single host machine will bring down all the virtual machines and all the applications running on it. Therefore, fault tolerance of the VM has become very crucial. Primary backup is a classic approach to provide virtual machine replication, like the highly respected work you may recall from 10 years ago here at NSDI called Remus. In Remus' approach, the servers are run inside a virtual machine, and a copy of that virtual machine is made on a backup, which runs alongside the service on the primary. As the primary executes the client request, Remus periodically, say every 25 milliseconds, takes the incremental deltas of its state, including the data memory pages, the CPU, and the disk, and transfer them to the backup. Remus ensures external consistency, which means the client will not observe any inconsistency when the backup takes over in the case of primary failure. To ensure ex external consistency, Remus uses an output buffer. Basically, what this means is that whenever the primary tries to send a reply, Remus blocks that reply out of the output buffer, and it doesn't let that, that reply go out to the clients until the primary receives the acknowledgement of the transfer state from the backup. <laughs> at that point, the state is going to survive a failover, and it's safe to release the re replies, which are generated before that state. Rimmer's w approach works very well when it was published 10 years ago because there was only a small number of CPU cores on each computer. However, 10 years has passed. Nowadays, a server program is able to process many more requests simultaneously, and each virtual machine is having more CPUs and running more server programs, leading to two limitations of this primary backup approach. First, primary backup approach has a downside in terms of Client perceived performance. The client is going to see some additional latency. To illustrate this, we will run a very simple experiment. We are going to replicate a virtual machine with a popular keyword store Redis running inside. What we are going to see is that when the number of concurrent clients has increased from 16 to 80 and reached the peak of throughput, the latency of Redis running, running Remus has, has increased from 300 milliseconds to 500. On the other hand, the native virtual machine execution, which has a low replication, has very low latency because it doesn't need to pause the VM and transfer anything. To analyze this, we connected how many memory pages need to be transferred in each synchronization. As you can see, actually the, the latency is starting to increase. We we'll need to transfer from the primary to the backup more dirty memory pages the clients are making. The second limitation is that primary backup approach suffers the split brain problem. Split brain problem is caused by the network partition between the primary and the backup. In this figure, we are replicating a keyword store service. When backup loses connection with the primary, it elevates itself to be the new primary and activates the virtual machine to serve the client request. Since the outdated primary and the new primary have the same IP address, some clients may be connected to the outdated memory primary and some are connected to the new primary. Here, client one wants to say the key x equal to five on the outdated memory primary, while client two wants to say the key x equal to seven on the new primary, causing inconsistent view on the client side. State machine replication is a powerful technique to address the two limitations of primary backup approach. It typically runs the same server program on three machines in parallel. In this figure, different clients are labeled different characters and different requests are in different shapes. State machine replication makes sure these programs see the exact same total order of input requests. Typically, 
we leverage a distributed consensus protocol, Paxos, to achieve this. As a result, all the consistent input will make sure the programs have the same execution states. Even if network partition happens, the system can still guarantee there is at most one primary as long as the majority of the replicas is found, which avoids the split boom problem. However, a major drawback of data machine replication is it needs to handle the long determinism of the service. To handle long determinism, you can use deterministic multi-threading or manually annotate the service code to capture the long determinism. But these two approaches are either slow or error prone. OK, so far we know that state machine replication approach has good performance by ensuring the same execution states, and it solves this simply brain problem. But there is no efficient way to handle the long determinism. On the other hand, primary backup approach can, automat can automatically handle the long determinism of the service by synchronizing all the state of the virtual machine. However, it has unsatisfactory performance due to large amount of state to transfer. It also, suff it also suffers this big brain problem. In Clover, our choice is to combine state machine replication and the primary backup approach so that we can get the benefits of both, both of them. Actually, doing so can be simple with two steps. Step one, Plover leveraged Paxos to ensure all the replicas see the same total sequence of network input requests. Step two, Plover synchronized the state of primary virtual machine and backup virtual machine periodically and then reads the network replies. I will tell you how these two steps work in detail in the next few, in the next few of slides. By doing so, Plover combines the benefits of state machine replication and a primary backup approach. First, because the primary VM and backup VM run the same service, receive the same network inputs, most of their dirty memory pages should be the same. And accordingly, only a small amount of memory pages need to be copied and transferred for synchronization. Our evaluation, our evaluation shows that up to 97% of the dirty memory pages between primary VM and backup VM are the same. Second, it can automatically hand address the long determinism of the service by synchronizing all the state of the virtual machine and ensure external consistency. However, to make a problem practical, we need to handle two major challenges. The first challenge is how to achieve consensus for the network inputs and synchronize the VM state efficiently. To address this challenge, we leverage the remote direct memory access, namely RDMA, in data center to build a low latency consensus and a synchronization protocol. The second challenge is when to decide the virtual machine synchronization period so that the number of same dirty memory pages between primary and backup is maximized. In Plover, there are three replica machines, primary, backup, and waitlist. When the leader receives a new network input, it evokes Paxos to replicate the input on all the replicas. The primary consensus component proposes this, this network input by writing the request directly to the primary to the backup and the witness memory using RDMA, which takes less than 10 microseconds. When backup and the witness receive the request, they agree on it according to the Paxos protocol. Primary virtual machine and backup virtual machine run in parallel to process the client request. Because state machine replication needs three replicas to handle the network partition, Plover adds a witness to form a consensus group and to save, compu and to save computation resource, the witness only participates in the consensus protocol and it doesn't process the network inputs. The rule of each machine is also safely maintained by using the Paxos protocol. In Plover, the primary periodically synchronizes the virtual machine state of the primary VM and the backup VM. The synchronization is also based on RDMA, and it consists of four steps. In the first step, primary and backup exchange and yielding the dirty page bitmaps. Second, primary and backup compute hashes of each dirty page concurrently with multi-core. In the third step, the primary receives the hash from the backup and compares the hash. Finally, the primary transfer only the divergent pages to the backup. 
The audible buffer on both primary and backup buffer the network replies since the last synchronization. When a new synchronization succeeds, primary releases the replies to the clients while the backups dis discuss their replies. The second challenge in Prover is when to decide the virtual machine synchronization period so that the number of same directory memory pages between primary and backup is maximized. Recall that the Remus approach invokes the synchronization periodically, like every 25 milliseconds. Let's suppose a service is running inside a virtual machine and it has received three client requests. Now, primary and backup start processing the requests in parallel. At the same time, you, you pause the virtual machine and invoke the synchronization every 25 milliseconds. Even if we have ensured the same total order of network inputs for both replicas, when it's time for the synchronization, the primary and the backup may be in different execution states due to their runtime factors like the virtual machine CPU scheduling. For example, when it's time for the synchronization, the primary has only fi finished the processing the first and the third request while the backup has only finished processing the second request. In this case, since primary and the backup are in, are in different execution states, Plover has to transfer all the dirty memory pages that the three requests are making. Therefore, if we do not choose the synchronization timing carefully, Plover has a large amount of divergent state to transfer. So, in order to decrease the divergent state, the best synchronization timing is when the service has almost finished processing the client request. Since Prover buffers the reply until the synchronization succeeds, so the new request from the client will not come, and the service will have very low CPU and disk usage when it has finished the process in the client request. Leveraging this feature, we propose the long intrusive scheme to monitor the service state without modifying anything in the guest VM. Because the threads running in the VM are the children created from the virtual machine monitor thread, we can easily connect the CPU and the disk statistics from, of the service from virtual machine monitor and therefore invoke synchronization when the CPU and the disk usage is almost zero. Plover also addressed other technical challenges like how to achieve faster consensus without interrupting the virtual machine monitor's IO invent loop. Uh, since time is limited, I will, I will not go into the details of this part. If you are interested, please read our paper. Uh, now I'd like to represent our evaluation of Plover. We use the three machines as replicas. These machines are Dell R430 servers, and they are connected with 40 gigabytes network. We configured the virtual machines with 16 gigabytes memory and four virtual CPUs because state-of-the-art virtual machine for tolerance systems evaluated up to four virtual CPUs. We measured both throughput and latency with 97 97% percentile. We compared the plower with three virtual machine for, for tolerance systems, including the basic Remus and the two optimizations of Remus, STR and Kalu. For example, Kalu is a primary backup system deployed in Huawei. It runs a primary VM and a backup VM in parallel, and it safely skips the synchronization when the network outputs from the two VMs are, are the same. We evaluated Plover on 12 widely used programs, including two key value, sto key value stores, Redis and SDB, a multimedia storage server, MediaTom, two database servers, MySQL and PGSQ, three HTTP web servers, Tomcat, Nginx, and Lighty, and four dynamic language interpreters, .js, PHP, Python, and JSP. To be close to the real-world deployments, we group these programs into eight practical services, including DJCMS, a content management system consisting of Nginx, Python, and MySQL. We used the popular workloads written by the third parties and varied the number of clients until the throughput of unreplicated execution is saturated. We evaluated five items how does Plover compare to unreplicated virtual machine and state-of-the-art virtual machine for tolerance systems? How does Plover scale to multi-core? And what is Plover's CPU footprint? We also evaluated Plover under various failure scenarios and compared Plover with, Plover with other three systems on different parameter settings. 
Since time is limited, I will only focus on the first three evaluation questions. This figure below shows the throughput on four services, Video Tom, DGCMS, 90, and the LogJS. The x-axis is the number of concurrent clients, and the y-axis is the throughput. The line in orange represents the throughput of unreplicated KVM virtual machine, and the line in blue represents the throughput of Plover. This figure shows the throughput of the other four services, Redis, SSDB, PJSQ, and Tomcat. Overall, Plover runs the fastest, and its throughput is very close to unreplicated when the execution reaches the peak performance. To understand why Plover's performance is much better, we collected the macro events of all the systems. Here, we take Lighty as an example. The interval column means the time between synchronizations invoked by Plover. The page column means the number of dirty pages in each synchronization. The same column means how much percent of the dirty pages between prim primary and backup are the same. The transfer column means the time spent on each on transferring divergent pages. Since up to 97% of the dirty pages between primary VM and backup VM in Plover are the same, Plover greatly reduced, reduced page transferring time. On the other hand, no matter which synchronization interval Remus is configured, the transferring time for a large number of dirty memory pages is always a major performance bottleneck. Plover needs to transfer only 1,000 pages, but Remus, STR, and Color need to transfer nearly all all of the 33,000 30 pages in each, in each synchronization. For example, since most network outputs from the two VMs are different, Colo has to do frequent synchronizations for almost every output packet. PJSQ is the only service for which Plover is slower than Colo. This is because PJSQ runs the SQL transactions and its outputs were mostly the same. Therefore, Colo can safely skip the synchronizations. Overall, on four virtual CPUs, Plover throughput is around one times higher than Remus, one times higher than Kotto, and 1.5 times higher than STR. Compared to unreplicated peak, for peak performance, Plover throughput is around 20% lower than unreplicated. The key speed up in Plover is the greatly reduced copy and transfer pages. In our evaluation, 72 to 97% of the dirty, page, dirty memory pages between Plover's primary and backup are the same. We have also impl implemented a TCP version in Plover, and the Plover's TCP version is still around one times higher than the three other systems on average because Plover greatly reduced the, the copied and transferred pages. We have more ana analysis in the paper, including the latency of Plover. If you are interested, in, please read our paper. We evaluated Plover with scalability with up to 16 virtual CPUs per VM. The figure below shows the scalability results on four services normalized to Plover throughput on four virtual CPUs. The results of the other four services are not included here because they don't need many virtual CPUs per van to improve throughput. For, in, for, for example, Redis, Redis is a single-threaded server program. Overall, Plover scales very well for all four services and its throughput is about three times higher than other three systems on 16 virtual CPU per van. For the CPU footprint, Prover consumes roughly the same CPU resources as Colo, and roughly one times more CPU resources than Remus, because the backup in Prover processes the request in parallel with the primary. Now we conclude. We have presented Prover, which can efficiently replicate a virtual machine with strong fault tolerance. It has low overhead, it is scalable to multi-core, and is robust to replica failures. We are now collaborating with Huawei company to transfer this stock energy, and we have just submitted a patent. Plover is open sourced, and you can access this link to try it. That's all for my presentation. Hi. Um, is it possible to is it possible to use um, chain replication instead of uh, Paxos for totally ordering the request to the VMs? And would there be benefits to it? 
so your question is, is there a, a, any alternative approach to use another kind of Paxos, right, to order the network inputs? Right, and in particular, chain replication. Uh, chain replication, I think, can work as well. Uh, yes, I think it's, a, it, it's an alternative approach, yes. Okay. Um, Shankar from at and Labs. Um, great work. Um, one of the key requirements for your methodology to work is identify when the process is idle, right? Um, what are the mechanisms to do that? That seems like a very hard problem to solve, right? Like deterministically figuring out when something is idle, right? Like how, how did you solve that problem? Uh, so the question is, how, do, how does Prover identify the service running inside a virtual machine is idle, right? That's the question? Yeah. Okay, so usually because uh, the server program works in the kind of, uh, in, works in the request request reply model, so if the client has does not receive a reply, it will not send the next request. So the service running inside will have a time w when it has fi finished processing all the client requests, and at that time, the disk usage and the CPU usage of the service is very low, and uh, because we can monitor the the home virtual machine status from the hypervisor, so we can connect the service statistics from the hypervisor and it determine when is the time that the service has almost finished the processing the kind of request. So if I understand it right, this methodology can work only for certain types of workloads that run on the VMs, right? Or is it more generic than that? Yeah. Thanks. Oh. Uh, are there more questions? Well, I, I'll ask a follow-up while people uh, come to the come to the microphone. Uh, it, it's cool that you can uh, detect uh, idleness uh, automatically, but it's also possible you could para-virtualize, and uh, some applications might ha find it useful to supply a hint saying, "Okay, I'm idle now," or "I'm nearing idle now." Uh, can you do you th are, can you think of applications for which that might work uh, better? Uh, sorry, I, I don't. Uh, might it be useful for some applications to be able to explicitly signal you that they are idle rather than uh, having to do automatically automatic detection? Yes. Uh, you mean what? Yeah, what applications did you find uh, the automatic uh, mechanism wasn't working as well as you'd like, and so it might be useful to, re to allow those applications to provide feedback? Uh, I'm we sorry. I think we can talk about it. Sure, we'll, ta we'll talk about it <laughs> offline. Yeah. And I'm going to run over here yeah. because I'm the microphone. Hi, uh, I'm Casey from Princeton. Uh, good talk. So I wonder when you run in your experiment, why you choose uh, read and write 50-50% distribution since uh, the real world distribution is read heavy, right? So when you test your read is performance. Okay, so the question is, uh, why do we choose 50% read-write workloads for uh, uh, for the evaluation? Is that a question? Right. Uh, actually, we also tested other uh, evaluation settings, and we don't include the uh, figures in the, in the in this talk. So, if you're interested in this part, you can read our paper. Okay, let's thank Chen. Yeah. Okay. Thanks.